Hello and welcome back to Kaiserreich, and we're playing still as Norway. Uh, there was a thing I was going to say last time that I think I completely forgot. Uh, Otto Ruge, who I said in the first episode was probably, or I thought he was, the guy who commanded the um, the defensive fortifications in the bay, Oslo Bay here, um, while, where like the uh, the German uh, cruiser Blücher was sunk during the invasion of Norway. Uh, that is not the case. I looked him up, but I and I was trying to say this last time, and I think I was just overwhelmed by events, but Otto Ruge is actually not that guy. Uh, Otto Ruge is the guy who organized the defense of Norway during the invasion and tried to hold uh, in uh, Trondheim. His uh, his defense plan was to have Trondheim hold while the Allies like came back to retake the, um, the town, so he basically pulled Norwegian forces up north uh, to middle Norway here. Obviously the plan did not shake out, uh, because of some sort of like miscommunications or like I think just general chaos in um, in how to or general chaos and very like I think different opinions in how to handle Norway there are a lot of those and uh, yeah because of that the allies did eventually retreat out of Norway or out of Trondheim well uh, let's unpause so uh, Gustav Fleischer of course if you don't know who he is he was a I mean, he's a well-decorated war hero. He uh, he organized the defense or the Battle of Narvik, I think, and uh, he was, I believe, he's the first general credited with winning a battle against uh, Nazi Germany. I think. Uh, so, because like in 1940 at this time, uh, Germany had only fought uh, Poland and. Uh, let's see, April... When was the invasion of France? I actually... How do I forget this? Okay, so yeah, the, uh, at this point, the, uh, the Germans had only fought the Polish and... You know, that wasn't necessarily the hardest thing. Uh, obviously, they, the Poles did resist and could, in like, could potentially had their armies been modernized and better, like, better organized, could potentially have held Germany. But then, of course, the Soviets attacked them from the rear as well. But yeah, so he was uh, he was the first one to, I believe, uh, win a battle against the Germans. Obviously, that battle uh, had no bearing on the fate of Norway, because eventually the Germans would win. So we have, once again, this Arabic uh, conflict here, uh, Jabal Shamar and Najd, or Najd, with uh, Abdulaziz ibn Saud, and you have uh, Saud, ib, uh, or Saud bin Abdulaziz. In uh, my German Empire uh, campaign, I think, this guy won, the Al-Rashids won, while the Saudi uh, lost. It was a, uh, yeah, like a whole deal about protecting Rashidi, Arabia, Unicorn, etc, etc, etc. Also, this guy? I don't know, dude, but like, oh, what the fuck was that sound effect? That was loud. I'm sorry if that was loud for you as well. Uh, this guy, I don't know about you, but, um... I see some similarities here. I looked this guy up, and, um... While I can find him on, like, genealogy websites and stuff, I can't actually find anything about him as a general, other than the fact that he was, like, Lieutenant Colonel, I think. Um... That's all I could find. Uh, the Oslo Analyzer, or the Os Oslo Analyzer. Um, no, we're going to go defensive rearmament, as we said. Yeah, I couldn't find anything about him, so for all we know, he could actually just be Wilhelm uh, cosplaying or something. That's a joke. Let's see. Concentrated industry, nope. 
no ahead of time we don't have the uh oh okay so we have the elections going now so today the norwegian people elect a new parliament the election is tightly fought and will decide the course of norway in the foreseeable future there are four possible outcomes first of all the radical socialist labor party is campaigning on a platform of socialist reform the society god has declared that such a, a victory would force their hand whatever that means Another possibility is the Social Democratic Labour Party in coalition with the Liberal Party. Furthermore, the market Liberal Conservatives would gain power with the uh, Farmers Party. Who would win? Well, who will win? So we will not uh, do the Radical Socialists because uh, the Radical so Socialists are the uh, Arbeider Partia, which is in Norwegian history the largest party. But uh, if we elect them, things go, you know, go get a bit. You know, with um, revolutionary right-wing and left-wing movements. And the Social Democrats and Liberals get a minority would... Uh, or majority, sorry. Uh, would create a uh, Venstre and... Norge Socialdemokratiska Arbeiderparti. Okay, so this is a... Huh. Oh yeah, this is during the uh, split. I think because uh, there, there was a uh, yeah the conflict with you know whether or not there should be a part of the international and stuff and obviously there's some alt history uh, shit going on here uh, but yeah so uh, we can have the national uh, Nor Nor Norwegian Social Democrat Party or we could have and uh, the liberals of course which is uh, left I think or is it or is it Hoda? Uh, Social Democratic Labour Party in coalition with the Liberal Party. Doesn't really say. Because uh, both of these would kind of be classified as Liberal Parties, but the Venstre here is like tiny, so I guess they don't count. And the Conservatives and Farmers. I think we're going to go with Social Liberals and uh, Democrats. Or Democrat, uh, yeah, Social Democrats and Liberals. Uh, that'll, that will give us NSA instead of uh, Höyre here, which is the Conservative Party. Uh, and that would give us... Eric uh, Kolban, which grants foreign minister uh, same ideology, multi opinion factor that sucks really in Kaiserreich. Uh, Cornelius Bergsvik, uh, industrializer, daily political power gain, resource gain, efficiency 2%, recruitable population factor minus 2%. That, not good, especially not for Norway, who has a small population. Heidi uh, Vol, good political power gain, good construction speed, but otherwise. Uh, Nothing great there. This one is obviously, I think, is way better. Yeah, we might actually just go with uh, Conservatives and Farmer Party. I think we're going to go with this one because it doesn't give the minus to a, a recruitable population and everything so um all right let's choose a a uh president or prime minister sorry after forming a coalition with the farmers party the conservative party will now form a government there are two candidates at the post of prime minister Carl Joachim Hambro uh the able and experienced party veteran or Johan Henrik Andresen Andresen uh the famous industrialist who is a new prime minister so uh, Hambro immediately stands out to, to me as a right choice here, uh, because of his history, but, uh, let's look at their, uh, their, uh, traits here. Construction speed, minus 4%, but he's got political power gain, and we just get a bunch of political power, level 20. Or, a corporate suit, which gives minus political power gain, but trade deal opinion factories, and, uh, oh, a bunch of construction speed stuff. Uh, we're gonna go with the businessman. Because we need that construction. And now we have Heide in charge. It's not the worst, and as it said, a uh, new election in three years. It, it's actually meant to be every four years, but I think that might be because of, um, like, the election period and all that stuff. Like, it's meant to model something like that. I'm not, I don't know. Or meant to model, I guess, maybe... Uh, the average, like, because you have local elections and you have... Um, you have, like you had regional elections or whatever and you got the uh like municipality elections or and you got like the national elections 
Might be meant to model something like that. I don't know. The opening of the 85th Storting. Uh, ting is, uh, stems from the uh, Norse thing. Uh, or thing. Uh, which is like um, a gathering of people meant to come to like co uh, come to an agreement about what to do. You have like um, they they have a like a judicial purpose in the in the Middle Ages, I think, as well, where you have um, like a ting where you come together to basically pass a sentence against someone or to settle a feud. So yeah, the uh, stor ting, which means the large thing. Uh, today, the king opened the 85th Storting and announced the political program of the new government. The transfer of power has been peaceful, and the new government will begin its work as soon as possible. Our democracy is strong. Uh, let's, uh, we're going to get the uh, industry up and running now soon, so let's go with uh, the fighter here so we can start building that whenever it's get, it gets done. We don't really have the industry to focus on radar and stuff, so we'll just leave that for now. We might want to stockpile fuel. Now we're going to go with the interwar artillery. Oh, and we can choose some, some uh, ministers and stuff. So we want industrial concerns and stuff. Uh, so, let's see. Construction speed. Why would you not go with Norskido? Holy shit, 15% industrial speed. Or research speed. This one is really good. For the construction speed. Uh, that needs RS Norskianwerk, and that is down there. Anything else we can go for? This is uh, Röfos Ammunitionsfabriker, a munitions uh, factory. Fuck it, my dude. I think we're going to go with uh, Norsk Hydro for now. Then we can, uh, with good conscience, run into the ahead of time stuff here. It's not going to be that much ahead of time, but you know. Oh, free dockyards. Let's uh, create. Let's have a look here. Oh, these are fucking terrible. Wow. I mean, even this one is like... Hold on. 16 knots. 18.5 knots, yeah. Uh, where's the torpedo attack? Liability is low, but where's the torpedo attack? 20. 10. Yeah, the, the old ones are better than the new ones. In terms of attack power, at least. I mean, we're not going to make any of those. We're going to make uh, light, ship, light, uh, light ships, I think. Actually, let's look at our current navy and see what we need. So we have... We have here some destroyers that can go into our main fleet here. This fleet is literally just big ships. We need a much bigger screen. What we need is cruisers, honestly. Need a bunch of these. I think. But are these cruisers as well? Interwar cruiser hull. Yeah, these are cruisers actually. Yeah, we need a bunch of these guys. We don't really have the um, uh, the experience for the ship design here. Like, this is a really good design, honestly, for uh, just something default that you're tossed uh, at the beginning of the game. This one, not so much. It doesn't have a lot going on. Could refit it later on and put some more guns on it, but I don't think that's a good idea in terms of, uh, like, or a good use of our industry. I think we just want to pump out more Olaf Drygason class. Just keep making them for now. Because we are going to need more uh, destroyers anyways. Germany, Seisha, and the Indo-Chinese Union have see signed a peace deal ending their uh, uh, their hostilities. Yeah, so uh, the Indo-Chinese Union has won there. 
as expected. And Jack Reed is elected the President of the United States of America. Gone is the big hoob. In is the sickly a journalist. Despite the massive instability rampant in the nation ever since the Great Depression in 1925, the presidential elections went forward and the voting results are clear. Jack Reed of the Combined Syndicates of America is the 32nd President of the United States. Jack Reed is turned into a savvy political operator during his time in Russia and a dedicated proponent of syndicalism. This stance, has, uh, to many, has made him uh, many enemies in the American society, but the association of trade unions that he leads remains strong. The American uh, America First Party already contests the election results, though. Now, of course, that does not mean that Jack Reed is going to remain the president. And yep, here's the event about the Indo-Chinese revolt succeeding. Elections in Italy. Elections in the Republic of Italy have ended with the Prime Minister uh, Ivano Bonomi remaining as Prime Minister. His gamble to call the elections early due to the black money crisis has proven to be rather successful. Cool, and female pilots as well. Is he quite liberal or is he just... Um... Oh, they're just like fucking gone hard on the uh, the air like air doctrine stuff for like air um, <clears throat> reform the Saudi have won which this will then transform into Saudi Arabia Okay, let's see. We're going to go with, I think, infrastructure because it will boost construction. I always do concentrated industry because I think uh, dispersed, uh, dispersed industry's real strength is the defense against bombing. But I think once you're getting bombed uh, and you can't stop enemy bombers, you're, you've already kind of lost. So I don't tend to go for that one. Because, like, w once the enemy wins in the air, they're going to have a much um, better time winning in on the ground as well. So I tend to go for concentrated industry and, uh, every time, because that's going to help me basically everywhere in terms of... Um, um, it, like, it, it changes the uh, conversion speed, obviously. Um, here. So th this one has better conversion speed, but I'm not often one to convert into military factories anyways so generally i i prefer this one because with it you can just create more airplanes to defend the factories instead and then with the leftover industry once the airplanes are up in the air you can create something else i think we might want to go with this one because uh, artillery is very strong the defense is really good, but we're not fighting yet, and uh, with Hans Reidaid Holterman, we can uh, create more guns, basically, and have them in the stockpile. We're not creating tanks yet anyway, so we don't need to care about that uh, stuff. Maybe we should get a... Hold on, can we... Let me check. Oh, 30 days of previously said research will be transferred. Never mind, we're not going to do that. I was thinking of uh, abandoning this and getting the design company for the fighters and then re-doing uh, it. I think we're going to go with one of these uh, defense uh, people here. 
Like uh, Christian Loke, Static Defense uh, Doctrine. Like you might want to swap out ministers or like swap uh, some some of this stuff, but we can't do uh, this because we're democratic. Oh, actually, we could do civil in a. Oh, never mind. We are. Yeah, we're on early mobilization, so we can't really do this stuff because we're democratic and we need higher um, war support and higher. Oh boy. The Soviets have uh, broken, or the Soviet Revolution has broken out in Russia, and Finland wasted no time in stealing Russian. Soil. We're seizing Russian soil. And simultaneously, a war has broken out between Hungary and Austria. Probably around, uh, you know, the whole, like, Im Imperial Congress or whatever it's called. Where they uh, choose, you know, how they're going to divide up uh, the lands and stuff and try to get, you know, uh, all the different nations organized in such a way that they don't start fighting each other. And the Russian Republic declared war on, the so on Soviet Russia under Nikolai Bukharin. Russian Republic still has uh, Dmitry Pavlovich Romanov. They haven't crowned him as Tsar. They haven't done anything really here. A second Russian civil war. Just 20 years ago, in, in the last years of the Weltkrieg, the Russian Empire collapsed, ripped apart by nationalist movements and divided between the Whites and the Reds. After, the, after a German intervention, the Republican government defeated the Bolsheviks, but it appears the Russian revolutionary spirit was not extinguished. After ineffective land reform by, Kerensky, by the Kerensky government and sever, uh, austerity measures to pay off the brest reparations, as well as a crisis in the government after the pre president's assassination, the cities in the western part of the nation have been engulfed with a red tide once more. Will, Bukharin, Soviet, uh, will Bukharin's Soviet Russia prevail, or will the loyalists of the white government defeat the dissenters a second time? When will they learn? What am model 18? interesting so um i mean it's uh, just short rifle or short um yeah short rifle i guess give i model 94 model 18 so this is a uh this is a like a it looks like a breech loaded gun uh, and this one might have magazines, I'm not sure. Probably not, actually. Oh, it's uh, Krag Jör Jörgensen, Kortgevær, Model 18. This is a real gun, which uh, I like. I think I know a couple of people who have it. Serbia crowns King Ale Alexander II. All right. And then we've got Selvlader Gevær, Model 32. Uh, personal and crew served weapons for infantry as well as the various other bits of... Okay, so yeah, this is generic, but yeah, this is a self-loading weapon. Essentially, it's probably just like a box mag gun with... Um, uh, with a semi-automatic sort of deal mechanism there. You can clearly see this one has a box mag underneath. This looks kind of like a um, like a wooden uh, G3 almost. In Norway, we did use the um, uh, the G3 for a long time after the Second World War, uh, like during the Cold War. We actually before that we used the uh, Car 98 case from. Um, uh, from Germany, and a lot of them still had the uh, like the Nazi um, coat of arms on it, or whatever it's called, like the the eagle, because they left a fuck ton of weapons in Norway after the war, and we we're like, I mean, might as well might as well use them. We also did create some of our own, which uh, did not have the eagle, I think. Oh, and the swastika, of course.
Standoff in America. A tense standoff has erupted in the United States as democratically elected President Reed fled to the city of Chicago after being forcibly removed from his position by General Douglas MacArthur, the American Caesar. From Chicago, Reed supporters have declared MacArthur's government illegitimate, as has the Southern supporters of Huey Long, based in New Orleans, and the Pacific governors under the leadership of Governor Frank Miriam. All have been given a deadline by the General MacArthur of, of 30 days uh, to either stand down or face arrest and execution. Whoa. Uh, considering all sides are rapidly raising forces, the idea that Amer America is uh, headed into a second civil war seems almost certain. Oh, here we go, boys. You along, Jack Reed, Douglas MacArthur, and Frank Mariam. Second American Civil War, Electric Boogaloo. Let's do the Panzer Sheep uh, question, try to get some of those uh, ships up that I was, uh, like, that I was wondering why we didn't have. Oh, and this, uh, this works now. Oh, that's so cool. So, uh, I, uh, previously I said in the beginning I'm using the NATO, like, MPU NATO division icons. You can check the mod list in the uh, description down below. If you click this button and you're confused by any of these icons, you can just click and look and it'll tell you what these things are. So, uh, there's nothing for air units yet because they haven't changed the way air units look. But look at this. There's cavalry, motorized infantry, mechanized, amphibious mechanized, light armor. I mean, that's, uh... <laughs> that's not correct. That's light armor. Uh, that one is meant to be there because that's amphibious armor. Uh, that that is medium armor and that is heavy armor. Yeah, so some of this stuff. I mean, it's it's a work in progress. It's a free mod. Uh, jungle infantry, Jaeger. That's also incorrect. No. Oh, Jaeger. Okay, so that's a different thing. So Jaeger infantry and jungle infantry. So I'm guessing that's like um, uh, forest infantry or something. Uh, like light uh, skirmish infantry for the forest. Uh, the United States declared war on the Pacific states of America. The American Civil War has begun. To those not in the know, it might seem like the crisis in the United States came out of nowhere. I think that's the mods, uh, or the the mod creators being a bit meta, saying, you know, this is kind of bullshit, but um, it's fun. We're doing it for gameplay reasons. But experts agree that this was a civil war years in the making. The destiny of America is at stake. So let's look through the Panzer Sheep question before we have to end the episode. Yeah, this is uh, really cool. I thoroughly recommend this mod if you like NATO. Uh, sim symbols for your units. I quite prefer them, especially because it does grant a lot of variety in terms of how you want to structure your armies in terms and like how you want to like have it appear visually. And yeah, I like it a lot. The pride of the, the Norwegian Navy is its six panzer sheep. Uh, these armored cruisers there. Also known as coastal defense ships are heavily armed and, ar and armored, but lack the operational range of their larger counterparts. Unfortunately, four of our panzer ships are in quite a bad shape. Having been acquired between 19 or 1897 and 1901, the lack of upgrades and proper maintenance has severely limited their usefulness. They are currently mothballed and the navy is awaiting word on their fate. What shall we do with our ships? We can have four of them back in service as heavy cruisers, or we can lose a lot of political power and upgrade and modernize what we can. I think we should do this because we have political power to spare. We don't really need it for anything right now. Doing the 1936 fleet plan, get those naval dockyards up and running so we can gra uh, like actually make a competent navy that can probably not stand up to anyone, but can at least defend us. All we need is for it to be able to stand up to Finland. Eliminate the German presence. Oh boy! Empower the clergy. Dude, this is a wild one. Oh, 
Right, anyways, uh, we're going to go through casualties now. Because we've got some wars going on now. So, the second American Civil War uh, will... Oh, we can't combine them all. It just began. Like, you can... If you uh, rewind the video, you can check exactly the date. Um, but the United States of America and Pacific States of America haven't really fought that much. No uh, losses yet here. Unionist Federalist War, so between the American Union State and the Federal States, uh, a thousand losses each almost. 531, 4,000. This is going to skyrocket once the war gets rolling. Jibay and Mongolia. Mark Lake have taken 172,000 losses. Holy crap. Compared to the Mongolian collective losses of 11k. The Galician-Hungarian War. The Hungarians have taken 120,000 losses compared to the collective 23,000. Alright, well, thank you for watching. In the description down below you'll find the mod list, you'll find my Patreon, you'll find my Twitter if you want to stay abreast with what's happening with the channel, uh, uh, or send me memes and whatever. Uh, you'll also find a Humble Bundle link if you want to buy Hearts of 4 or its expansions. Click that, uh, you can buy it there and also support charity, currently it's set to automatically support Wikipedia because I am a big fan of what they do, I think it's very important in this day and age. Uh, you can, however, change it to whatever charity you want to give the extra money to. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, and I get a small cut. And I think you, I mean, you get a Steam key as well, I think, so... It's like buying it at Steam anyways. And Humble Bundle is a very reputed, reputable uh, service. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.